Download the All-Star app. Make your picks for UFC fights, challenge your friends, level up and win prizes. Link in description. Get it now. All right, Brian, let's start with um, Carolina Combat Sports and Fitness, right? You've been with yes, them. Sir. I believe you've been with your coach since the beginning. You've been with them for a long time. And it seems like you guys got a really good like family environment, man. How important is that for you, you know what I mean, with your kid and you know all of that stuff, your family as well? No, I mean... um. Yeah, like you said, uh, I've been with Tom since I started training. Um, and, you know, he he split off to start Carolina Combat Sports, and so we've been open for a couple of years now. It's kind of, you know, it's like it's one of those things that puts into perspective how fast time goes. It's like, man, dude, I just remember this just being like an empty show, like it was yesterday. Now, you know, it's a gym that's been functioning for an extended period of time, but um, now, um. I just appreciate it more than anything because we have grown together and, you know, Tom works as hard as anybody that I know. Um, and then it's like, I can always count on them. They, you know, I've been with Tom for years, so he, he knows me. He can tell like if I come in and I'm in a mood or, you know, he can read my, you know, if my schedule's off, he knows when my schedule's off. So, you know, um, there there's like a, a level of trust that I can give to him that, you know, I wouldn't be able to give to other people because he knows me so well. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, you're also coaching, I believe the youngsters at the gym. How is that yeah. man? just dealing with that? You know. What I mean? <laughs> oh my goodness. I, man, I oh, do. I love coaching the kids. Um, like my kids class, like I don't have like a really big kids class. Like it's not, um, you know, we don't do like after school program type stuff. Um, it's really like, uh, a pretty like hard paced, fast paced class. You know what I mean? And, um, it's really cause when I left, the uh, the other gym that I started out, I, I started at, I had a big kids program and, when I left two kids who I'd just been training with the whole time, um, they came with me and originally it was just them two. And I didn't really want to coach any other kids except for them two. But then, you know, it's like, okay, well we need looks, you know what I'm saying? We need bodies, you know, open this up a little bit more. And I've just been fortunate. Like I said, it's not a big class, but all the parents are really cool. Yeah. Uh, all the kids are great in their own individual way. And, um, yeah, man, I, I, I love it. You know what I'm saying? It, it's weird. Um, it's, you know, as cliche as it is, it's like, you know, you get as much from the kids as you are able to give them, you know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, it's awesome. I love the kids. Yeah, man. And yeah, as you're building a, a solid community, you know, like a martial arts community and, you know, teaching kids, man, teaches you a lot of patience for sure. Right. Yeah. 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 Patience. And, um, you know, you really have to understand moves in a way that like you can explain it to you know, an eight year old, you know what I mean? Or, you know, a 10 year old, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it just makes you, you know, just approach technique different, you know what I mean? So now there, there's a lot of, you know, really positive things. I mean, you know, it's definitely uh, a little bit of a time consumer, you know what I'm saying? I spend a lot of hours uh, in the gym with those guys, but it's, it's very rewarding, you know what I mean? For sure. And uh, yeah, let's get to, you know, your career. The last fight against Ange Losa, that was a very interesting encounter. You know what I mean? There was, you know, it sucks to that you got a no contest in that one. But there were some funny moments, man. You could admit that, right? After the fight. Oh, man, dude. I tell you, um, it was funny because after the whole thing was over, you know, I'm walking out. And, you know, my adrenaline's like through the roof, you know, um, the, everyone in the crowd was going crazy. So I was feeding off it, you know, even the apex is not very big, but, um, and as I was walking out, one of the employees was like, man, whoever's on the bleep button's going to be busy tonight. And I was like, how much of that did they get? And she like, they're just like, they're like, they got all of it. And I was like, they got all of that. <laughs> I was like, they're like, yeah. I was like, oh, my God, that's going to be wild. But, yeah, no, it was kind of funny seeing the the reactions on social media afterwards. Like, it's – and I'll, I'll, I'll stand on this. I still would have rather had a win. still would have rather had a finish. But um, I think stock-wise, like, it – you know, my stock went up like I did win. You know what I'm saying? Like, I might have had more fans just from that 
just from them <laughs> seeing that post fight interaction, how crazy it was, than I would have if I would have just you know got another finish that wasn't super spectacular. Yeah, the 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 clips like the reels and stuff on like YouTube and everything, they went pretty crazy, man. Those like especially when uh, his brother tried to fight you. Like what? Once you walked out, that was pretty wild, man. Like, come on, man. Like you said, there, yeah. you you had a good response to that, though. Like, dude, your brother's a professional fighter, and I whipped his ass. Like, what do you think I'm gonna do yeah. to you? <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? It's like y'all trying to go zero and two for the night. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I mean, you know, he had to say what he had to say. He felt he felt like he needed to say, but. You know, it was it was at that point nothing else needed to be said. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that was that was that was definitely wild though. Um, I'm happy to get, I'm happy to have that behind me because a lot of people wanted to see the rematch for that, and I would have been okay with it. You know what I'm saying? Like a fight is a fight is a fight, but I'm happy that you know he he fought Bonafim. You know what I'm saying? I'm fighting Juice. So, you know it. You know it happens. Uh, I think everyone who watched that knew what was going to happen. And, um, like, he went this way and I went this way. You know what I'm saying? We're both going to keep on moving on with our careers. Sure, man. And, uh, you know, talking about the fight, though, like, you guys actually fighting, you know, you had a really good performance, I thought, man. You know, I think a lot of people were counting you out in this matchup as well. And you went in there and proved a lot of them wrong. Like, what were some things that you prepared for Losa that actually kind of worked really well, you think? Um. Well, one, it was just... um the approach in general, like, I mean, um, like, uh, when I fought AJ, I really wasn't a big fan of that performance cause I fought a little too safe. You know what I mean? I, you know, I didn't, uh, you know, I fight better, you know what I'm saying? Uh, when I'm fighting aggressively looking for opportunities, you know what I'm saying? Not waiting for opportunities. So, um, it was just definitely a little bit of that. And then um, just the desire to like make a statement. So it was like, okay, I need to go out there and like take this W. You know what I'm saying? And people, people were hyping them up a little bit. So I was excited for the matchup. You know what I'm saying? Like I was excited, you know, uh, in the fight before mine, you know, the commentators were saying, you know, this guy might be a dark horse in the welterweight division. So it was like, I definitely want to go out there and be like, okay, well, you know, whatever hype he's got, I'll squash that real quick and, you know, make myself look as good as possible in the process. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. I feel you, man. And uh, now you are fighting in Paris, which is a phenomenal opportunity, right? Where What job can you have where you're just like, all right, yeah. I'm going to go over to another country and get in a fist fight <laughs> for fun to <laughs> get yeah. paid? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's going to be... Um, yeah, no. Um... It is like so cool and just like so surreal. Like it's like, oh fuck, dude, yeah, we're fucking, we're going to Paris. You know what I mean? It's like it's like a really cool spot. You know what I mean? So, um, and it'll be great. I'm I'm hoping, like uh, I'm expecting just from being on the other side of it when um, the UFC came to Charlotte. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm expecting to get booed a lot. You know what I'm saying? You say is a hometown guy. Um, but just the energy period, I'm just looking forward to that energy, you know what I'm saying? Not just fighting in Paris, but fighting someone from Paris, you know, I think, um, the fans are going to go crazy and, you know, I, I just can't, I cannot wait, uh, for, to, to be in there for all those people. Yeah, man, it's going to be an incredible environment. And what's the wifey saying? You know what I mean? Paris is a location where the wifey is like, yo, I'm going to that one. Like, you know, like other, like South Dakota, they're not going to want to go to that, but you know what I mean? Like Paris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's uh, she's not really big on traveling, oh, okay. period, you know? Then you'd be surprised, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I think she's going to hang back for okay. this one, but, you know, it is maybe one is. day in the future. Yeah, we'll it, is we'll get it. Is. it is what it is. Yeah. You know, it's a business trip. Go out there, mm -hmm. handle business, look at some things real quick, and then come on back and get right back to the grind. Yeah, after that fight, man, I was expecting you to get booked pretty quickly. You know, you didn't look like you took any kind of damage in that fight. You know what I mean? Why did it take so long? It's been six months. Um, well, um, I think it's just timing. And, you know, like I thought I had a fight um, and, you know, the other side didn't take it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, a couple times. So I think it's just getting to it's tough now because I'm in a position where it's like, I'm not a ranked person, but you know, I'm not, you know, it's like, like for someone trying to get into the rankings or someone trying to climb up, like I'm like uh, an unattractive option because 
I'm just as dangerous as any of those guys in the rankings, but I'm not ranked. You know what I mean? Um, so definitely like getting someone to say yes has been kind of tough, but you know, things happen when they're supposed to happen. So I'm not stressed about it. You know, we're just going to keep on the best time to beat me was yesterday. You know what I'm saying? So the longer they sit around and wait, you know what I'm saying? The worse it's going to get. Yeah. It, it, you are in that not so sweet spot. You know, people say sweet spot, but you're in that not so sweet spot as a fighter where it's like, yeah, you just explained it perfectly. You know, it's a gift and a curse, man, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, no, a hundred percent for real. So that's why I, I really need to make a statement with this fight. So I can get a number next to my name and maybe get some get some fights a little bit easier. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Kevin Jusay, man, what do you think of him? You know, he had two fights already in the UFC. What are you looking at? Yeah, I mean, he looked good in those fights. You feel me? Um, you know, tall. He's quick. He's technical. You know what I mean? Um, his judo base has given him uh, a nice option to counter a uh, takedown. So, you know, he's a solid, you know, well-rounded guy. You know, he got the choke uh in the first fight in the ufc um so you know he's he's good he's good for sure like it's definitely um gonna be a an interesting challenge because it's the tallest guy i fought well no okay the tallest guy i fought since i dropped to welterweight because i fought taller i've definitely fought like several taller people at middleweight but um um now it'll be good it'll be a good different look um you know he trains at a nice gym but um now, I think I kind of just outmatch him everywhere, personally. So uh, I'm just looking to go in there as the best version of myself possible. And uh, I'm looking to make a big statement, you know what I mean? So that I can get into the top 15, you know what I'm saying? Get a little bit more clout, you know what I'm saying? Get some more uh, fans from the result of my performance and not because I talk crazy on the mic afterwards, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, you, you know, you started off, you know, winning the, the Ultimate Fighter. And then you drop down to welterweight. You won that first fight against Sato. Incredible kick. And then, you know, you took that fight, got a, had a setback. And then you, you know, had some problems with the weight cut. But now it seems like, you know, you sh you've changed all of that. You know what I mean? Because I think there was people concerned about you dropping the welterweight. You know, you've probably seen that online, right? They're like, hey, man, he looks really skinny. But your last two fights, you had no problems. Or actually, the last three. Like, what changes did you yeah. make? Um... Was uh, the Renat fight? That was that was an exception because um, I took that on really short notice, and then um, I actually I blew out my knee ten days before that fight, and then I got sick the week of the fight. So it was there was just a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that no one really knew about. So um, that fight is kind of the exception, um, but I made weight on that one. Um, the the next one I missed weight. Um, that was because. I was like, if I can make weight doing that, I can make weight doing anything. I was just kind of like a little bit too relaxed going into the cut and kind of got off of my regular routine. Uh, but now, now, you know, like I said, we got the routine locked in, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, it's, it's actually, uh, I put on a lot of muscle, so it's easier to cut weight cause I'm just holding more water now. So, you know, um, Nah, man, we're, we're locked in. You know what I'm saying? I'm in my prime right now. So, you know, it's like we got to make make moves, make things happen. You feel me? Yeah, you know, when, when people, like, online are concerned for you, know, because there's a lot of negative shit going on online, right? But when they're concerned for you, how does that feel, man? Um, You know, it, it's always, like, on one hand, it's like, I appreciate it. Like, anytime, anytime people are, like, giving energy to anything involving you and they've never met you, like, that's just... Um, it's interesting and it's humbling, but, um, on the flip side, you know, it's like, if you're not in my inner circle, you don't know what's happening or what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, it's like, you have no, you know what I'm saying? You have no actual grounds to like comment on this because you don't actually know what's happening when this is going on. You know what I mean? So, um, it's definitely, it's interesting. Um, I don't ever really take too much to heart, but yeah, you know. I, I, you know, I always appreciate it though. You know what I'm saying? I'd like to have more comments than, than less comments. And even if, you know, they're not even necessarily saying negative, but just like people just being concerned, um, and like not happy, you know what I mean? Um, you know, it's still better than nothing. For sure. For sure, man. Attention is, is what the game is now. You know what I mean? Part of the game, at least, uh, training camp. Part 
you know, you, you got your team, but then outside of that, where else do you work to, to prepare for your fights? Well, yeah, like you said, home base, that's Carolina combat. Um, Tom Ziegler, head coach. Um, I do boxing privates with, uh, coach James at dime boxing. Um, I do, uh, some grappling at Charlotte Jiu Jitsu. Um, and I do strength and conditioning at velocity sports and performance. Um, and uh and then i get some i get some work in with my big bro and some other people uh at an open mat at a model warrior you know what i mean so you know it's, i move around a lot home base is carolina combat that's where i do the bulk of my stuff but i definitely try to uh venture out as much as possible and try to learn as much as i can from as many different people as possible you know what i mean yeah the carolinas man they're just like the community of gyms and stuff it just seems like it's growing and growing you know i mean there's people that have gyms all over the place it's why 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 is that happening man in the carolinas that's a good question man i mean um like there really is um a really great like surge of talent like coming through i mean just at my gym you know i'm saying we got shamik harvey and jonathan martin like two guys i think could fight and win in the ufc right now if they had the opportunity you know um, I think Shamiki's about to fight for a flyweight title in two weeks. Um, John's fighting for, I forget who he's fighting, but he's fighting in October. You know what I mean? So, you know, um, and that's just the guys that are at our gym. There's guys at other gyms that are also super talented. You know what I'm saying? People just don't know who they are yet. So, um, no, the scene, the scene seems to be popping off. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I can't say all the way why necessarily but you know it's just like people are discovering it and just like becoming passionate about it you know what i mean it's really awesome to watch you know yeah for sure and uh you know what what do you what do you uh envision for yourself in in this fight coming up like what do you want to show the paris crowd because you're gonna if you win you're gonna shut them up you know what i mean or they might be just cheering for you at the by the end of the fight hey you know if it's if it's spectacular enough, you know the people will cheer whether they want to or not. You know what I'm saying? It will be involuntary. Um, but you know, it really always depends on you know what he does. But I see a lot of opportunities to take take advantage of a lot of things. You know, I'm sure he would say the same thing, but um, uh, I don't see it getting out of the second round. All right, uh, a couple questions, man. Outside the outside of your fight, Bilal Muhammad, yeah. man, he's the new champ of the division, yeah, man. you know, congrats yeah. to him. Phenomenal performance. You know, what do you see in him? Do you see a decent title run in him? Um, so welterweights, welterweights at a pretty interesting spot right now. So, you know, it really depends on who he ends up fighting. Um, you know, if he fights Shavkat, you know, in all honesty, I mean, I think people, I actually I don't know what the public opinion is on that, but um, I think that's a pretty interesting fight. I think that's a pretty interesting matchup because um, we haven't really seen Shavkat have to fight off of his back. So you know, um, even though he's a lot more imposing, and I think Shavkat has more aura going on right now, it's like the reality is if if he can't get Bilal off his leg, you know what I mean, and he can't get off the cage, then. You know, why wouldn't Bilal win that fight like he does every other fight? Um, so, yeah, you know, it's really interesting. It depends on who he fights. Like, I feel like there's a big changing of the guard on welterweight right now where a lot of the younger guys are kind of coming in. A lot of the older guys are kind of coming out. So, um, he's capable of it. But, you know, it's, it's one of those things, I, I don't know, like – it's not gonna last long if he fights Brian Battle. That's all. <laughs> that's all. That's what I want to hear. It won't last long if he has to fight Brian Battle. That's what I like to hear. That's the best answer. That's the best answer. Uh, <laughs> it, like it's like if I ask you who has the best chance of beating him, you'd probably say me, Brian Battle, right? Like, me, for sure. yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I love it. I love it, man. 100%. <laughs> September twenty eighth, USC Fight Night, Paris, France. Brian, thank you so much, man, for taking the time. All the best to you and your team and your family. And uh, yeah, man, it's going to be fun watching you, man. We've been watching you and you've been knocking dudes heads off. So I don't expect anything less. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. It's been, it's always a good time talking to you. I always know something good is about to happen if we're talking. You know, I appreciate you for having me on. <laughs>